Hey everyone, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. The following compilation of stories that you are about to hear is a compilation of unusual anecdotes from sailors at sea. Therefore, if you suffer from a little bit of thalassophobia, aka fear of the ocean, you might want to refrain from watching this. Also, each and every single story in the following video was narrated with the explicit permission of the person who wrote it. Therefore, the ready threat from which all of them were obtained will be provided in the description below. With all that out of the way, let's begin. Number one, we were sailing from the North Sea to West Africa in a 330 feet ship. For the non-Americans watching this, that would be 100.584 meters. I was off shift and I was sleeping. I woke up and for some reason I decided to go up to the bridge which is something I usually never did when I could be sleeping or eating. It was night, so all the lights were off on the bridge, save for a few red ones, and I noticed how bright it was outside. I went over to starboard, and the fucking white cliff of Dover's were completely illuminated by a full moon, just beaming moonlight. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Of course, the maid on duty was English and was nonchalantly like, Oh yeah, it's Dove! And by the way, this one isn't me, but a Welsh guy I met in the Caribbean. It's his story. He had done a few transatlantic trips in a small sailboat, so... He had tons of ocean experience. A big storm caught him with huge rolling waves. He decided to heave to ride it out, basically using your sail and the rudder to put the brakes on and give yourself a smoother ride. He was in the cockpit and he was riding up one of the bigger waves. The next part, it's completely wild. He swears to God on his grandmother's grave that a giant whale just below the surface cruised up the wave beside him and just stared straight at him. He describes looking into this animal's huge eyeball, just looking back at him for what was probably a couple seconds, but he said, felt like minutes from a few feet away. He's never lied or really even exaggerated otherwise, so I believe him. Uh, can you imagine seeing that? Uh, sometimes I really miss being at sea. Number two. I was on a run between California and Hawaii and I was out on deck, doing rounds on deck equipment, checking oil levels, etc. I saw one of those free-fall lifeboats just hanging out in the distance, and I was like, what the fuck is that? I called the bridge, and they said a ship accidentally dropped their lifeboat a few years ago. Now, it turns up from time to time, I was glad to know that no one was on it, but it gave me a brief scare. Number 3 French Navy Navigator here. A few years back, I went underway from Toulon on a high sea patrol ship for a routine patrol. The sea was very rough, out of the road teeth coming from the west which was completely contradictory with what our weather briefs were indicating. 
captain decided to go ahead nonetheless. We took a heading towards the east to enter Hier's Bay. When we enter in the pass, shit went down. And by the way, that's H Y E R E S. Hier's Bay. I was outside, starboard wing of the bridge to take bearings when the ship took a 35 degrees list on starboard. If I had held my arm out, it would have been underwater. I held on the compass for dear life, because going overboard in that weather would have probably meant death. Needless to say, I shot myself. When the ship leveled, my boss went out to check if I was still there and ordered me to go below to check how bad the damage was to some of our gear. I went, and when I was at the main deck, the ship took a 43 degrees list to starboard. I was then blessed with the horrific sight of a washing machine that was struck in a room by the hull on port side punch a hole through the bulkhead and go straight to starboard without touching the deck. Also, a lot of the firefighting equipment such as axes, hoses and pumps was just flying all over the place, with guys from the security department desperately trying to catch it and fasten it. At that point we had entered the bay and had better weather. We had lost electricity in the bridge and the CIC, so the captain decided to wait in the bay for the weather to calm down. When it did, the next day, we pulled back into port for repairs. That little escapade resulted in a few bruises, the electrical network of the bridge and CIC being badly damaged. Naturally, the guys that were supposed to strap down shit didn't do it correctly and they got punished. And for me, a reminder of my mortality. Mm. On a more positive note, I once saw a stork land on our 100mm Tourette after a sandstorm off Libya. And it stood there for several hours. Also, we had a couple of sperm whales with a calf swimming alongside for almost a day of Ivory Coast. When you see that kind of stuff, it doesn't matter if you are 3 months or 20 years in, you feel like a kid again. And yes, for anyone reading this, I would like to thank for the awards. Thank you so much, strangers. I'd like to thank anyone that bothers to read this. Number 4. Not sure if it's unusual. I worked offshore on a drill ship and I experienced a couple of different things. The saddest was a shark getting stuck in the moon pool. He ended up dead. Manta rays are fucking fast. A few would just casually swim by and then out of nowhere just shot forward like a torpedo. Once, while testing the drilling package, we had a call from subsea for a full stop. When we checked the cameras, an octopus was climbing up the drill pipe. I ended up being lucky and having a captain that allowed fishing. Sharks love coming behind the fish we hooked and took a bite of them. Dolphins play with each other. Whilst having a daily walk around the heli deck, I heard a splash and I went on full emergency mode looking for someone that fell overboard. Then another splash behind me. Then another again behind me. Eventually I noticed them jumping out of the water playing along. <laughs> so we went through the outskirts of a tornado. The eye of the storm was in China and we were going past Taiwan, not through the strait. 
and still had 30 meter peak to peak waves. Not violent, but quite worrisome. Number 5 A rogue wave. I got to see a rogue wave. My buddy and I were loading gear onto a weapons elevator on one of the sponsoons. We were supply and we were bringing stuff to the flight deck to ship out on a COD. Webs would let us use the elevators if they weren't using them. This was the USS Coral Sea, an ancient carrier that no longer exists. Modern ships have supply elevators, but we were at the mercy of weapons and flight ops using a plain elevator. This wasn't that far off the coast. Most would be able to bubble over to shore, but the ballasting system of the drill ship fucked up and sent it swinging wildly side to side. The stability calcs had 12 degrees as the tip over point, I believe. We were one or two from that figure. That's probably the most scared I've ever been. Anyway, it's rough seas, but nothing too major. After all, we were like 40 feet above the waterline. Anyway, we are unloading the pallet of gear onto the elevator and something catches my eye. I look up and there is a mountain of water coming at us in slow motion. It's easily as high as the flight deck. I hit my body and we both haul ass off the sponsoon through the vent tunnel and into the hangar bay. We hear and we feel the wave hit the ship and all of a sudden it's like a fire hose the size of the hatch just gushes into the hangar bay for a few seconds. So, there is a cluster fuck going on as lots of other stuff got messed up, but locally, nobody was hurt. We went back out, and most of our stuff was gone. Clearly, if we had been out there, we would have been swept overboard at a minimum, and probably slammed around on the spawn soon and whatnot. Who knows if we would have been conscious enough to activate our life vests. They had a CO2 cartridge that you activated with a ripcord thing. So the vest was flat and unobtrusive unless you needed to blow it up. That was my closest call in four years on that ship. <laughs> Not the worst trade to get free college and edit yeah oh we also collided with an ecuadorian oil tanker off the coast of south america we were shooting craps it was my birthday and i was up about one hundred dollars suddenly the space just moved over like 20 or 30 feet never felt anything like it definitely it wasn't a wave about 30 seconds later Come to find that about 20 feet of the bow of the ship was bent over about 5 to 10 feet, like a tin can that just got peeled back. Uh, I got a lot of good stories out of those four years. Number 6 I was in the US Navy. I'm pretty sure that we heard siren calls somewhere northwest of the Marshall Islands. I was on the smoke deck at three separate occasions at night and anyone who was out there heard what sounded like a distant scream or screech echoing over the waves. I remember it very well because it caused several man overboard scares where we had all have to go muster to make sure that those sounds weren't any of ours. I never actually saw anything, so I rationalized that it could have been some kind of animal or seabird, but that shit sounded human, but not entirely human. We joked for weeks after we left the region that Ariel, the little mermaid, was gonna kill us. 
This was in the year 2013, but I still remember that sound like it was yesterday. The kind of sound that hits your core like a freezing wind does. Not something I'd want to hear again. Number 7. I was in the US Navy on board the USS Tarawa LH-1 from the year 2002 to the year 2006. Some unusual things I experienced were the shellback ceremonies. Basically, a sailor who has never crossed the equator is considered a slimy wok, and those who have crossed the equator were considered shellbacks. It's a huge thing that usually takes all afternoon where people dress up as King Neptune and his court and they induct the new guys or the new girls into the fraternity. It's all lighthearted and goofy now, but back in the day it crossed into hazing territory. I got to do it twice because I became a golden shellback when we crossed the international dateline. Other than that, I worked the night watch, generally, and standing topside in the middle of the Persian Gulf at night was, without a doubt, one of my favorite things. The amount of stars you could see in the sky was nuts, and just listening to the water was soothing.